What's up, my dudes? This is Dustin Selzer with an episode. This is Dustin Selzer with another episode of Electrician U, and today we're going to talk the difference of potential. A lot of people call it voltage, um, but you're going to hear that term if you start reading enough books and start really digging into this or if you're working around guys that um, really, really understand what's going on, they're going to use the term difference of potential or uh, potential difference. So what voltage literally is, is a difference of potential energy between two things that allows movement to happen. So with uh, the most simple thing that I can think to to draw is a battery. So think of a car battery, right? Car battery, you got a positive and you got a negative. Well, inside of there, you have a rod on one side and a rod on the other side. Each one of these rods are made of different materials. There's all kinds of different ones. But essentially, you have a material that freely gives up electrons and you have a material that freely uh, takes electrons. So th just the two differences of those materials um, there's a difference of potential energy when you have a dielectric in the middle here and you connect these two terminals, you know, like you literally take a wire and connect them, current's going to flow through there very, very rapidly, uh, kind of out of control rapidly, and you'll probably burn the fucking battery up. But there's, there's such a potential difference of uh, potential energy that movement is allowed to happen. So every one of these bars is made of atoms. Inside the atoms, there's a little electrons. Electrons move. If you actually take like a magnet and you put it next to a piece of wire, well, inside that wire, the electrons that are making up all of that copper are actually moving. It's an invisible force because we can't actually see electrons. But that's all electricity is, is it's a movement of a current of electrons, just like wind through the air. Uh, same thing. So. Um, if you have a difference of potential, you have two different things. You can have a high and a low, you know, like lightning. Lightning, once you have like a whole bunch of uh, uh, negative charges and you have a whole bunch of positive charges down low, lightning will actually, they will, it will bridge the gap of the difference of potential energy that's existing. If you just have like a regular day outside and the weather's pretty chill, there's no buildup of you know negative ions and positive ions. There's not going to be anywhere for this movement to happen. So what a difference of potential energy does is it allows movement to happen. Same thing, say you've got a table and you've got a book sitting on the table. Well, right now there's a difference of potential energy. This book, once it's pushed, will actually move down and hit the floor because this is a low potential and this is a high potential. Gravity, instead of electricity, same thing though. Gravity works off of a, of a difference of potential. So one last example. I like to think of electricity like water. Most people do. You start doing this long enough, you'll sit and hear all kinds of water analogies with electricity. So say you got a water slide. Or just you know any slide, but we're gonna go with water on this one. You have a high, you have a low. Well, water is going to flow down that thing pretty drastically, right? So say, say that this is literally only this high. This is perfect scale, and I put a hose right here. Water is going to flow down it. You know, you can put your finger and touch it. You can put your face in front of it, and it wouldn't hurt you. But say this is expanded, greatly expanded, like Niagara Falls. That water is going to fucking kill you. Same thing with electricity. The more voltage that you have, which is the more of a difference of potential energy, the more dangerous that electricity is. You know, this is akin to like 12 volts, but if you have fucking 500,000 volts like Niagara Falls, the shit's gonna kill you instantly. So that's how you can think of voltage when you hear difference of potential. Um, just understand that there are certain things in an electrical system that are at the same potential, and there are things that are at a different potential. So when you have a multimeter, you know, you've got your 
Um, you've got one red lead. A little spike on it. And you've got one black lead. With a little spike on it. They do that because they're trying to, you're trying to find two different potentials, a positive and a negative, or a hot and a neutral, or a hot and another hot. So, you know, if you have one hot wire that comes in and another wire that comes in, you're probably going to have 208 volts or you're going to have 240 volts. You're going to have such a difference of potential that it's able to read how strong of a push of difference of what the different or what the difference in this potential to this potential is and that's why you'll get a reading of 240 volts and uh, that sine wave is constantly moving up and down so this this meter actually averages and finds what the average number it's kind of a nominal number when people say 240 it's not actually 240 it's going to be like 243 or 237 or when people say 110 or 120 it's that's just a nominal voltage that's terminology that we use but when you test at every single house and every building that you're going to be working at, you get 125 volts from hot to ground, or you'll get 115 or 118. You know, it changes everywhere because every power system or every every distribution of power is going to be different. But it's all like relatively the same. So, anyways, again, potential difference of potential. Now, what happens if we're in a panel and uh, in that panel? we take uh, one side and the other side, you know, like every single panel you're gonna have probably black circuits and red circuits if you're in America, right? And these are all gonna be labeled like two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12. So if you were to read between black and red, say that, you know, we've got circuit two, we've got circuit four. Well, between these two, if you're going to read those wires, you're going to get 240 volts because inside this panel, you have one hot that's coming in and you have another hot that's coming in. That's how you, you're we're bringing 240 volts into this panel and each one of these phases, each black phase is going to have, you know, uh, one potential in each red phase is going to have a different potential. Um, and even when you look over at the ground, you know, you've got ground down here. Ground is at a completely different potential than either one of these hots. And neutral is supposed to be relatively the same. You don't want to have a difference in potential between your neutral and your ground. You don't ever want to read voltage between neutral and ground. You always want those to be at the same potential, which is why we bond them at a service. So, anyways, uh, what would happen if we took and instead of pulling off of circuit four, say we pull off of circuit two and circuit six, two black circuits. Well, again, this one big black wire that's coming into this panel is touching every single one of these black phases. Same thing with the red. This, this big red wire is the same potential. It's, it's touching every one of these red wires. So when you have one black that you're testing and another black that you're testing, it doesn't matter if you test from 2 to 10 or 2 to 14. If you're testing black to black, you're going to get zero volts on this meter. Why is that? Well, again, those wires are the same thing. They're all the same wire, essentially. They're just in different spots. But the, they all have the same potential. They're all at the same high. They're not on two different highs, or they're not one's high and one's low. But if you were to test any one of these blacks to ground, you'll get 120 volts. Unless there's something fucking wrong, you should only get 120 volts. Uh, unless you're in a high voltage situation where you might get 277 volts. But between this red and ground, you should be getting 120. Between this red and this neutral, or between the black and neutral, it should still only be 120 volts. And that's why between any two hots, you're going to get 240. Because up in a transformer, I know I'm going way off the rails and giving you all way more information than you're probably bargaining for. But... Okay, so up in a transformer, you're going to have uh, basically a big coil of wire. 
So between here and here, we're gonna have 240 volts. It's more complicated than this. This is just kind of a layman understanding of how this works. So you're gonna have a coil of wire. The difference in potential between this side of this coil and that side of this coil gives us 240 volts of potential energy. Because this thing is actually like a fucking crazy winding of just like tons and tons and tons and tons and tons of wire. And what happens is like from one side of that like crazy, crazy, crazy coil to the other side, because of all of that coiling, it actually slows electricity down. It actually makes a difference of potential between it. It creates a right and a left or a high and a low. Anyways, so how a neutral works, this is the bizarre shit. Nobody really understands how neutral works. Neutral, you just cut this in half. You don't cut it in half, you tap it. You literally make a connection right here and send this down so that between this part of the coil and this part of the coil, you have 120 volts. And between this part and this part, you have 120. Does that make sense? If you have a whole coil that's 240 and you test the potential between here and here, it should be half. If you test between here and here, it should be a quarter, half, three quarter, full. So that's how we get 120 volts is from a transformer up there. We're sending one hot down to the house and another hot down to the house and somewhere up in that transformer, they're tapping in the, the dead center of that coil and they're giving us a neutral. And that's usually the same point when they, uh, they ground each one of the poles too. So the ground and the neutral are at the same potential, even at the transformer. Um, that ground is a different ground than the ground that we have, our grounding electrode conductor, our equipment ground at our panels. But it's, again, it's just illustrating that ground and neutral should always be at the same potential. I think that's it. I think that covers um, everything that I want to talk about with difference of potential. So when you talk about voltage now, understand that how voltage works, how, how a movement of current through a wire happens is because somewhere at a utility company somewhere, somewhere at a, a dam locally or you know a coal plant or something, somewhere these big generators are creating a difference of potential and they're sending that difference of potential out on different wires. And you're able to do a hell of a lot. If you connect those two wires, you're gonna send a shitload of current through at one time. Uh, really, as electricians and electrical engineers and electronics guys, like anybody that's dealing with electricity, what we're really doing is we're trying to slow electricity down and control it so it's at a manageable, workable level. Once you slow electricity down and throw some resistance in its way and make it have to slow down, it's usable. You know, it can, it can be in a light bulb without a light bulb fucking exploding, you know. They put an argon gas in there and they put a little tiny filament and that little filament has tons and tons and tons of little coils in it. So it's like an obstacle course essentially that that current has to go through. So it slows it down so much that the filament starts glowing and it's in a controllable level. That's how electricity is, is used. Otherwise, if you just touched the two power lines together, Boom, you'd have a huge fucking explosion because it would make all of those electrons fly through that circuit so damn fast that it would just start welding everything together and just melting everything around it. Electricity's fucking powerful, man. It's very powerful. That is what a short circuit is. So short circuit, you know, you got a wire that comes out. We'll say that this is AC electricity and say that we've got some load here. I don't know. We'll just call it a, a flash or a, a light bulb. So if you run a wire to a light bulb on the neutral side and you have one on the hot side, this load is again like an obstacle course. It's, it's, it's a resistance, uh, literally it's called resistance. It's a resistive load that that current has to go through. So it's like going fast and all of a sudden it just has something that it has to go through. It's like you know, trying to run through mud all of a sudden to slow the current down. But if you were to connect this wire and this wire, you'd have a short circuit. And right then, you would have an immense amount of current, an immense amount of energy flying through the fucking circuit, uninhibited. And that's dangerous. It's super, super dangerous. So that's why short circuits, we have to put, you know, breakers in panels. And that's why we put fuses in cars. And that's why, you know, we 
we try to protect from short circuits happening because you know short circuits can create arc flashes. Um, they can destroy equipment. You know, they can burn things up. They can really hurt a lot of things. So, um, just think of your job like that. You're like a fireman, holding this hose and letting this crazy motherfucking force come, you know, come out of you. And you know, we're just turning the valve and trying to like control how much voltage goes to certain things and how much resistance do we have to put in a circuit to be able to slow this current down so that it's at a usable level, and how much amperage is a certain circuit drawing, you know, and how much, you know, what size wire do we have to put so that we can responsibly, like, aim that that current somewhere without the wire burning up because it's too small of a wire or whatever. Um, but that's pretty much the, the gist of it. So, anyways, way off my tangent, sorry, a little bit of extra info there, um, but difference in potential. Learn that term, study up on that term, go into some forums, check some electrician talk forums, Mike Holt forums, just, you know, try to dig into difference of potential a little bit and see uh, um, see what you can learn about it, because it's a very important term to know as an electrician. So, I hope that was easy to understand. If I was way confusing and off tangent, I'm sorry, but deal with it. Uh, love you guys, and I'll see you in the next episode.